Hey there YouTube, uh, it's Sean, back with another episode of uh, Teardown Tube. This time I got an old 3.5 inch Western Digital, it's a 15 gigabyte PADA drive, which kind of has, um, it served me well for a number of years, but I mean 15 gigabytes now is pretty sad, and it's just collecting dust in my parts drawers, so I thought why not tear it open. I might turn it into like a hard drive clock or something need or something I don't know but as it is right now it's not exactly useful and it's many 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 years old so uh, let's look this guy um, it's just your standard run of the mill it's really heavy I'm, I'm surprised I'm used to dealing with that 2.5 inch the um, laptop drives which are so much smaller but um, uh, cast it looks like some kind of um, cast metal um, bottom plate here which is really dense and heavy and you'll notice that there's this uh, little air hole cover right here which they always warn you do not cover <laughs> the hole um, basically how you get most of these guys open is there's usually some sort of tape right here you can see where you can start pulling which um, airtight seals the uh, top lid usually aluminum onto the bottom and you'll notice as well um, in this case five screws surrounding the perimeter as well as the driver board which is connected via um, another four screws all the screws are they don't look like security but they're torques so let me get my multi-bit set out there just so that I can get this guy hopefully I get the right size on first go I just want to make sure you get the right size bit so that you don't strip any of the heads. I've done that before, stripped a, a screw, and the only way you can get them out, really, as far as I can see, um, you can take a, um, like a chuck from a standard drill with the, uh, the mandrel with the three fingers and tighten it around the head and then use that to, to gently torque it off. Or you just take a drill and you you rash the entire head off, you, you drill straight through to the um, the center and then pop the head off. But I mean that's rather destructive, but that's like a worst case scenario. So let's get this driver board off. They're always notoriously hard because these are machine screwed in usually to get these suckers off, so it takes a little bit of elbow grease. Okay. And you'll notice that the top of this board, there's really nothing but silk screening and uh, test pot pads as far as I can see. It's nice that they've gone ahead and silk screened uh, Master Slave and Cable Select onto the jumper uh, part right here. But other than that, there's just what appears to be some test points and that's pretty much it. And so you can just lift this guy straight off. There should be a socket um, for the the armature heads as well as some sort of spring contacts yep for the um, the hub motor and you pretty much all of them that I've taken apart are pretty much the same just a lot of foam let's peel this off there you go just um, a little bit of foam there for mechanical stability um, here you can see Western Digital rolled their own controller chip right here in the center. You've got another, um, this is a, um, what is it, a, uh, the leads are um, curled underneath the chip. They're like a, uh, not a wingle style, but like a J lead style. You can see that uh, West, this is some sort of programmable uh, microcontroller of some sort. You can see they placed the label for the uh, firmware version that they programmed. And you'll notice a Cirrus Logic. Um, I don't see them too much nowadays, but uh, back in the day, like 90s, early 2000s, I used to see a lot of these chips floating around in electronics. Uh, let's see. You have the header for the, it mates with um, the female port right here for the actual, um, the arm, the read-write arm. You've got the four contact points for the, um, the... Uh, brushless motor for the the disc hub. You have a um, 
ST chip right in here and a Nanya, what appears to be some sort of flash uh, chip right in there. As well as you'll notice right next to the power input pins, a regulator and decoupling caps and whatnot. And that's pretty much it. Oh, here's a uh, little crystal for the main processor. Other than that, pretty simplistic layout. You'll notice a diode and another uh, D-pack chip. Not sure, probably some sort of regulator. Other than that, very simple layout. You know, kind of what I'd expect. Uh, this is probably the uh, buffer chip. Usually, uh, most hard drives will have like a 8 megabyte cache buffer or something like that. But other than that, very simple layout. Not really all that much in terms of usable parts for the uh, driver board, but hey, you know what? <laughs> okay, so now to the um, the most interesting part for me, at least. I love these uh, warranty void if removed. Warranty void if removed. Well, you think I care? <laughs> this drive, uh, let's see if it's marked with the date code. August 26th of 2000. So this guy is already almost... 12 years old. <laughs> so let's uh, void this warranty and peel that tape. Get in there with your fingernails. You know, I highly doubt that the, vo the if they would actually accept, you know, if this were defective, um, if they would actually replace it. <laughs> so there's really no point in being scared of opening this. You just peel it all around the sides like it were a pack of gum or something, and yeah, just uh, set that aside. Just damn it. And now you have the drive that you can finally take the uh, five screws off the top. I mean, I guess I after I'm done totally disassembling this, I could put it back together. But I mean, there's no point once you lift the lid on this drive. A single speck of dust that gets in there on the uh, the heads or the platter will will destroy it. Well, I'm more worried about the platter, if anything. But seeing as this is pretty much not all that useful to me, I, I really don't care if I kill it. In fact, I'm probably just going to scrap it and uh, turn it into some sort of uh, Friday afternoon project or something. Okay, now that everything's off, you should just be able to uh, lift it. Unless if I'm missing a screw, like a noob. I wonder. Let me get my uh, pocket knife out. This guy I've been using since <laughs> since I started electronics when I was like 12 or something. My dad gave it to me. And I've chipped it and messed it up, sharpened it several times. And it still works, I'm surprised. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and say that there's something else holding it down. So let's uh, peel off all these little stickers if we can. Because otherwise it, it should just pop off. I, I hope to God that the uh, the remaining screw is not underneath the uh, top side label, because that would be a pain to get off. God damn it! Everything's sticking to me today. Yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that there are no screws under any of these, but for the completeness of dismantling, I'll take them all off. And last one, yeah. They're just the, uh, the screws are coming in from the other side. So let's see what the heck is uh, preventing me from getting in there. 
You know what? <laughs> Screw it. I'm just no pun intended. I'm just gonna take off the entire label here. Yeah, <laughs> of course, one screw right in there. Of course it would. Of course, yeah, that's the screw holding uh, the top onto the the uh, center of the arm. There might be another up there, not sure. Still not coming off. Oh, I hate labels and stickers that are covering screws. That's interesting. Western Digital uh, label just peels right off there separately. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Let's stick this in and kind of get in there and just cut it away gonna piss me off that much. You can just go to hell. Okay, seriously, stickers. Sticky crap. Annoying. Okay, now this is the final screw. I can feel it uh, coming loose there. Okay, so finally now, the moment of truth. Um, you know, get yourselves ready if you've never seen the inside of a hard drive. <laughs> Ta-da! And on the back side of the lid, nothing all that interesting. Um, you'll just notice some uh, silicone or some rubber presses down on the top of this to keep it secure. And your air vent, uh, which goes right through here. Because while this is spinning, I assume that it generates some amount of air pressure or something. This guy is going to be a 3.5 inch that spins at 7200 RPM usually. And a little I don't even know I guess it's some sort of like little desiccant pack or something to uh to you know uh prevent humidity or whatnot inside the drive because I'm sure that would screw things up. And what appears to be another one in the corner right here. Yep, this is desiccant. And you'll notice the uh, disk drive right here. It's actually interesting that it, the, uh, it isn't retracted. <laughs> I guess uh, last time I pulled this drive, I didn't exactly um, I didn't exactly um, you know properly shut it down or whatnot. But anyway, you'll notice how a disk drive operates. Um, there'll be at least one platter which is um, coated with a special um, magnetic material so that you can write specific bits um, in rings around the platter and you'll notice the um, the rewrite armature with a head mounted at the tip you can't really see but it's a, it's a very tiny little piece there on the end underneath the, um, the spring tension armature and that while the disc is spinning it creates um, kind of like a hovercraft. There's like a layer of air that this the head rides on. So it's not actually touching the disc, but it's like less than a hair's width uh, floating above the disc. So while it's spinning, that can either write data to the bits along the disc or it can read it, picks up the, uh, the data. And then the cable, flux cable to that just goes through here to the, um, the contacts on here to the main controller board. Now what's interesting is this guy it must have been the lower model at the time because you'll notice that there's really there's a lot of room left in here. I, I can see at least probably one or two more platters could have fit on. Two more platters, so it could have fit uh, three platters total. And if each platter is double sided for, yeah it looks like double sided, there's two heads, one underneath, one on top for that one. So then that would be what, 45 gigs or so at the time? For this technology and so it's interesting this lower model is just missing the two upper discs and also there there are um, uh, extra arm slots 
for two more, uh, well, actually four more, one for the top, one for the bottom of each extra disc that they could have added for the higher end models. You see this a lot in electronics. I mentioned this in an earlier video that for for the sake of making things uh, cheaper, they will uh, leave out extra features, but it'll physically still be compatible with if you wanted to add it yourself. But you wouldn't do that with a hard drive. But uh, let's see how we can get this uh, guy off. Looks like... We're gonna need to pull off the um, the magnet. You gotta be really careful with um, hard drive magnets because these guys are super powerful and they can pretty easily crush your finger if you get them in between there. So I might need to run and grab a good hefty screwdriver to prevent that. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. So then let's just pull out, actually no, maybe not yet. See if we can get this guy off. No, it won't come off as one piece. Darn it. Oh well. Let's just, when in doubt, pull every screw out. <laughs> I didn't even try to rhyme. Okay, every screw that you see, yank them. Darn it, I need my tweezers. Okay, let's get these guys out of here. So frankly, this is starting to annoy me. I've never had this much trouble with the hard drive before. There we go. I have no idea what this part does. <laughs> Some sort of, um, I don't even know. It might be the, um, yeah, this guy looks like the stop for the, um, the head, um, armature. Uh, let's see. Pull the heads all the way out. And it looks like, yeah, I damaged the heads. Yeah, you shouldn't manhandle them. I mean, if you open up a hard drive, expect it never to work again. But, uh, well, I damaged the heads. So I guess there's nothing left to do, but, um... Take it out. gonna be annoying okay well next I don't want to force it next let's uh, get that hard drive ladder out hopefully I have a small enough bit yeah it's ought to do well notice how uh, shiny the surface is there and that's basically it, it needs to be that clean as I said a speck of dust will could easily destroy a hard drive. That's why they assemble these in clean rooms that are cleaner than, uh, you know, medical grade uh, hospital rooms. And you can just lift the retaining clip now. And a lot of stuff just kind of fell out. The uh, spacer ring. And now can I get it? I try not to get all my fingerprints all over everything. What the heck is keeping this in? Oh, the head's out. There we go. Ooh, shiny, you can see me. Hi. <laughs> oh, man. And this is a 3.5 inch hard drive uh, platter. You'll notice that the disc, uh, disc drives are named according to the diameter of the platter, not 
the size of the case. So this is 3.5 inches. A 2.5 inch will be uh, quite a bit smaller. 1.8 inch is going to be tiny. I have one of those, uh, a few of those in my room. And the compact flash card size, um, those micro hard drives, the discs are minuscule. I have a few opened up one day. I, actually, I have a few broken uh, compact flash uh, type 2 size hard drives I could open for you guys one day, but those are a pain to get open because every screw is like the size of like a grain of sand. Uh, anyway, very, very shiny. Okay, uh, let's put this aside. Uh, too much shiny for one day. And here you have the head, which I destroyed, unfortunately. You just yanked this guy out. <laughs> This is a, uh, we've already gone past the point of no return. This guy is not going to work after I reassemble it, even if I do. And set this aside for a second. We the head. Uh, let's see if I could separate this without crushing my finger. Because that would be awesome. This is really ridiculously strong. I usually prefer to slide, instead of trying to separate them, to slide one out. And that way, and keep it away from anything metal and your fingers. <laughs> keep the other magnet, uh, you know, well away from anything that could stick to it. Because you're going to have a hard time getting it off. These are, um, you know, neodymium um, rare earth magnets. They're super strong, and then you take a metal screwdriver, and it's pretty... Oopsie. Uh, technical malfunction. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I uh, didn't realize I knocked my camera over. Anywho. Yay, two crescent-shaped magnets. Uh, keep them opposite sides of the desk so I don't kill myself. But anyway, <clears throat> so let's take a look at the head. Now I see a female Molex connector, yada yada. Nothing too interesting there. However, if you look on the head, you'll notice the uh, controller chip for the read-write operations for the uh, head right there. It's a small um, silk chip soldered there. Uh, let's see. Other than that, you'll notice the head's pretty simple. It's just uh, destroyed now, but it's... Uh, just fingers on each side. There's this little, small, tiny black um, chip there. That that's what actually reads it. And very, very fine wires running down the arm, along the side to the controller chip, and they're soldered right in there. Other than that, uh, you'll notice the uh, uh, coil windings for the um, the electromagnetic arm. Uh, this is what moves the arm when it when this coil is activated. It opposes or pulls itself closer to the um, the north south uh, magnetic domain on the the permanent magnet. This guy, so that it can rotate itself like that. You'll notice the little stopper right in here, so that it stops. It's a uh, mechanical limit, so that the arm doesn't go crash into the center of the disc or go too far out. And that's pretty much it. These guys uh, have ball bearings in there, so that it's very smooth uh, motion in there. Whee! Okay, enough of that. So that's pretty much all that's interesting in that. Next, you've got the uh, metal plate, the uh, bottom chassis plate, and the hub motor, which is whee, a brushless motor. It's a, um, what is it, a two-phase probably or something or another. Um, yeah, other than that, these guys are really fun to play with if you, um, make a controller for them. They're, um, ball, ball bearing mounted, and let's go ahead and pull this sucker out. Need to switch bits again. Just three screws. And that's it. And 
should it should just lift out. Yep, it does. Everything's machined, very tight tolerances. You gotta love it. And if you actually hook up um, like a multimeter to there and spin it, it'll generate a um, like an AC uh, sine pulse wave. But yeah, really fun to play around with. You know what? I want to try something cool for a sec. Let me run and grab an LED. Okay, I'm back. Got some LEDs. Let's see if we could uh, light one up just by spinning it. Uh, I'm bored today, so. Fortunately, it doesn't look like anything's happening. Uh, it was worth a try. I know someone did this online. Ah. This hooked up an LED to the... Ah. I hope I didn't grab a dead LED. Uh, it's a boring Tuesday afternoon for me. This is what I do when I'm bored. I'm just going to go ahead and say no. It's... Not gonna work. Why? I just wasted three minutes of your time. Oh well. Nice experiment to do. Anywho, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna mess around with the parts here for a little longer. Um, there's really not much else all that interesting. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of people make uh, hard drive clocks, which I am actually seriously tempted to do. They'll either cut a uh, sliver in this platter and then backlight everything with uh, like an RGB LED or a regular LED. And then when you rotate this really fast, if you flash the LED at just the right time, wherever the stripe is, will light up and nothing else so that you can create patterns and whatnot. I've seen people carve uh, set, like seven segment digits into the disc so that they can have like a digital clock going on. That's really cool. Uh, I've seen a lot of different things. Uh, people replace a platter with a circuit board, and on the circuit board have like a pop type um, a string, a line of LEDs so that writes out uh, letters and digits along the perimeter of the disc. And that's really awesome. I might try doing something like that. I don't know, but um, I guess this is it. My videos keep getting longer and longer. Uh, I would put this back together, but it's useless anyway by now. So if I do anything cool with it, I'll post it on my channel. So that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next week. If you uh, enjoy this video, you know, like, subscribe, comment, do whatever. Just show me that someone's watching this video and I'm not just wasting my time and everyone else's. And check out my other videos or my site at DIYtronics.blogspot.com. I have a lot of really cool projects that I built. I pretty much use scraps for everything. I, I rarely go out and buy parts, except for if it's like an LCD module or something. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next week. It's been real. Goodbye.